Hey guys, okay, so we are going to start off by talking about the greeting and the self introduction, okay? So let's go ahead and cover that. Okay, the basic steps, number one is stating your name and organization first. Okay, that is the most important thing. Okay, so let's, get, let's give an example here. For example, uh, there could be a phone uh, voicemail and it starts out with, Hello Mr. Kim, this is Jay calling you back from the bank regarding the issue uh, with your credit card. Okay, so it starts with, Hello Mr. Kim, this is Jay. Okay, calling you back from the bank. Okay, so that's the organization. And then they're talking about the uh, reason why they called. Okay, another example. Let's look at example number two. It starts out the same way. Hello, sir. This is Ryan Kim returning your call regarding the meeting. Okay, again. Hello, sir. This is Ryan Kim and then returning your call uh, regarding the meeting. Okay, so the organization is not said in that specific example, but it, the caller is identifying himself as Ryan Kim. So we know who called. Okay, so and then here's another one here. Next example is Hi, this message is for Miss Choi. Okay, I'm returning your call about the damaged laundry. Okay, so in this case, the the name of the caller and the organization is not mentioned, but they addressed the the one who they wanted to talk to, which is Miss Choi. They also brought up the issue about the damaged laundry. So just with that that's enough information for them to for the receivers to understand what the call is about okay okay so moving on to uh, the next part first part being the stating the name first the second part will be confirming the issue okay so here before the receiver before the receiver states the solution okay what they actually have to do is you have to acknowledge that you understand the issue the problem Okay, so you have to pay close attention to the voicemail to listen in and figure out what the main problem is. Okay, what the main issue that they're calling about is. Okay, so one or two sentences should be uh, used. Okay, that should be enough to explain that you have understood the problem. Okay, so here's a couple, here are two uh, separate examples. Okay, general examples. First example, I received your message regarding the fact that and then you add the subject and the verb. Okay, subject plus verb. Okay, so let me give you an example on that. I received your message regarding the fact that your washing machine broke. Okay, so washing machine would be the subject and the verb would be broke. Okay, so that's an example. Let's move on to example number two. I've got your message about the issue and I understand that your washing machine broke. Again, the subject plus verb. Okay, so they're really similar. One said, I received your message, which is more formal. The other one says, I've got your message, which means the same thing, okay? About the issue regarding the fact that something happened. So they're pretty much the same, different wording, different, different feeling, okay? The first one, I received your message regarding the fact that subject and verb is a little bit more formal than saying, I've got your message, okay? That's more for informal, uh, surroundings so let's say if I call my friend or if I called a co-worker where I'm friends with who I'm friends with so less formal okay but definitely mean the same thing okay let's go ahead and take a look at the next slide Okay, so within the strategy point number two, we have structures. We talked about the different methods, okay? Part five of the TOEIC speaking exam actually has two main types, okay? It's either a complaint or a request, okay? It's one or the other, okay? When thinking of a solution of the issue, it's best to keep it simple. Simple is best, okay? Having a complicated story or an, an, a complicated answer is great, but the thing is, if it's too complex, you're bound to make mistakes. So trying to keep it simple will make it a lot easier for you to answer the questions, okay? After the solution is given, you have a lot of time. So during the remaining time, what you can do is you can give the contact information, the address, or the time span, and or the product policy, 
Okay, those are some things that you can include after you give the solution in order to fill up the time and give more information to the caller. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the next slide. Welcome back everyone. Okay, so remember in the, in the previous slide I talked about uh, two different types in part five of the TOEIC speaking exam. The first one that I mentioned was complaint. So let's talk about that, okay? So when you receive a call about a complaint from a customer about something, this is what you should uh, focus on. Here we go. So a complaint has many different types, okay, within that. It could be problems with the uh, customer service, or it could be faulty equipment, wrong items shipped or delivered, okay, or delayed or non-received packages, okay. There are many different reasons for a complaint, okay. Those are the common complaints, okay. Common things that could go wrong within a business-to-business -business, business interaction, okay. So it's always best when you have a complaint, it's always best to start with an apology, okay? Because you are sorry. You are sorry that they are having a problem, okay? There shouldn't be a problem. We're here to fix it, okay? That's the mentality. So you start with an apology, then you propose a solution to that problem, and then offer something else that, you, that they can have, or maybe some other ways or methods that they can have in order to make their... Uh, experience a happy one. Okay, so first one, let's go ahead and take a look at the dissatisfied customer service. Let me give a, let me give you a couple of examples. Let's take a look at the next slide here. Okay, you'll see two examples. The first one, I'll go ahead and read it out for you. I'm very sorry for this inconvenience. We will train our servers thoroughly to make sure that there won't be any unpleasant experience at our restaurant. And as a gesture of sincere apology, we'd like to offer you free dessert. <clears throat> okay, so in this one here, it's at a restaurant. Okay, maybe the chef or the owner is talking to a, a customer who has complaints about the service. Okay, so in this case here, I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. Again, they started with an apology. Okay, after the apology, the simple solution is to train the servers better so they have better service. Okay, and additionally, the owner or the head of the restaurant or the chef offered a free dessert to, help, uh, to have them feel better. Okay, so that's the step. Let's look at the second example. Second example states, I apologize for our mistake. I found an error in our system and have refunded your money back to your credit card. Your money should be refunded back to your credit card within two or three days. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay, so in that specific example, it's talking about a problem with the transaction. So what the customer service department person did was to refund the money back to their credit card. Okay, it'll take two or three days, so they provided additional information regarding this transaction, this refund. Okay, and as a bonus, they offered any other help with any other problems that they might have about this transaction or about something else. They asked the question, is there anything else we can do for you? Okay, so those are two examples uh, regarding the dissatisfied customer service. Okay, the next uh, part is when the package did not arrive yet or they, got, they received the wrong items. Okay, let's take a look at the slide. Two examples, starting with the first one. It says, I'd like to apologize for this inconvenience. I will check the delivery status of your order and call you back with the status report immediately. And since this is our mistake, I will waiver the delivery fee off for you. Okay, again, starts with an apology for the inconvenience then the immediate solution is check the delivery status and let you know immediately. And then since this is our mistake, we are offering the waiver of the delivery fee. Okay, so there is that additional uh, um, action um, or service. 
that they are providing. Providing. Okay, let's look at the second example. I'm very sorry for this inconvenience. In case of wrong item being delivered to our customers, we offer full refund for your money and all we ask for you to do is to send the item back to us in the original packaging with the receipt. Good news is that you don't have to pay for shipping for it's already covered by our company. In this case here, we started with the apology. I'm very sorry for this inconvenience. And then when we ship the wrong items, okay, by accident, what we do is we offer full refund for that item and all they ask, uh, all we ask for, for, the, uh, for the customer to do is to send that package back to us and we will go ahead and send the correct item. Now, when they send, send it over to us, they have to pay shipping, but we're telling them we have this label, we are going to pay for that shipping, okay? So they don't have to worry about it, okay? So the customer representative explained to the customer what they can do and also provided information on, on uh, what they can do, okay? Let's take a look at the next slide and talk about the request. Okay, so we talked about the complaint, now we're gonna talk about the request, okay? So oftentimes it's a request for help. So let's talk about it. Okay, the request for help is often more difficult than a request, uh, than a, uh, a complaint, okay? So uh, the reason for that is because a request doesn't really have a specific solution. You have to think of different ways to answer that request, okay? versus a complaint, which is, this is a problem, well, you're gonna to have to fix it. But for a request, okay, this could be a solution or that could be a solution. So you have more uh, path pathways for solutions, okay. So lots of practice are needed, okay, um, and you have to hear about many different types of requests for you to feel more comfortable about coming up with solutions, okay. So that, that definitely takes a lot more work and practice okay sometimes the answers are going to be easy they're going to be straightforward you're going to be able to come up with the answers quickly but most cases you have to think about it okay oh this request is for this okay what do I know about this what are different ways to help this customer out so you have to think about it more often okay okay so within the request you have you they can ask a request to change Okay, or add or cancel a service or something uh, that we are providing. Okay, uh, second type would be something like troubleshooting. Okay, they have the item, they're trying to work work with it or they're trying to install it, but they're going through some problems. Okay, either the product is malfunctioning, they're getting error messages, they don't know why it's not working, they need help guidelines. Okay, that's another one. Within the troubleshooting, we have two different types. It's a simple solution. Okay you know there's a problem with you have to replace the batteries or you have to turn it on right it's an obvious answer but sometimes a lot of people forget to plug in their electronic uh, devices so tell them to plug it in tell them to try it turn it on go into setting reset if possible so many different solutions for that okay um, also some customers can come to you for help in terms of a long-term uh, process okay so they're not having a problem with one thing. For instance, like a business, they're saying, my business is not doing so well. What can I do to improve my business? So there could be general and broad questions um, that, that need more brainstorming time and more ideas uh, to try out. Okay, let's take a look at the next slide. So within the structure, uh, within proposing a solution, there are a couple, several methods that I want to go over with you today, okay? First method is possible suggestions or ideas, okay? Possible suggestions or ideas, okay? Let me give you a list here. As you see on the slide, we have, I suggest that you do something, okay? It's a suggestion, it's an idea, okay? Number two, which is same, I have some suggestions to make. I have some suggestions to make. And then you can list out the suggestions, one, two, three, okay? 
Third one is the most simple one. It says you should. Okay, you should try doing this. You should try doing this first, then this second, then maybe if they fail, try the third. Okay, so those are all suggestions or ideas that the customer representative could tell the customers who are having problems. Okay, okay. Category B. Here's the second one. It's a guaranteed solution. Okay, it is an answer. Okay, it is a must do. It's not a suggestion like A, it's different. Okay, B is what you need to do. Okay, starting with that, the first one is what you need to do is this, then this, then this. Okay, very structured. Okay, you're not saying try this, you're saying do this. Okay, we know that is the problem. This is step by step. Do this. Okay, number two, please make sure that, please make sure that this is done then this, then this, then this. Okay, very important steps. Okay, number three, first thing you need to do is this. Okay, first thing. The first thing you need to do before anything else, you have to do this first. Then you have to do this. Okay, they're very specific instructions. Okay, also answers. Okay, all right. Third category, we have uh, when referring to another person, okay, or service for the solution. Okay, so in this case here, I cannot solve this problem. I cannot give a solution. You have to contact a different person or department in order to get the answer. Okay, let's look at some, some of the uh, example answers. Here we go. So number one, why don't you call Mr. Kim, my supervisor? Okay, so there I'm referring not to me, but you should, uh, the customer should talk to Mr. Kim, my supervisor. To find the answer okay okay number two you should contact the sales department okay you should you should contact the sales department would you like me to transfer your call so in that case here let's say for me I'm customer uh, sales rep or I'm a customer uh, representative right so I help out the customers but the customers question has to do with something in the sales department so I say, okay, for that, you need to contact the sales department. Would you like me to uh, transfer your call to talk to them? So I'm offering that service of automatically referring them to the sales department. Okay, so those are two examples for referrals. And the last part, D, okay, when there is no immediate solution, okay, when the referral or a guaranteed solution or a suggestion doesn't work, you don't have an immediate answer, you don't have any answers, you need more time. Well, in this case here, there are a couple of examples to use. Okay, number one, I'm afraid that I can't help you with your request. It is because we only offer online store credit. Okay, so I can't exchange the item for you, I can't refer to someone so they can help you out. The answer is very straightforward. We, can, we only offer online store credit okay that's the only way okay so then the customer has to decide what to do okay okay number two unfortunately I am not available on that date okay would you like to make an appointment on another date so in this example here it's about scheduling a time okay a meeting or an appointment unfortunately I'm not available on that date is would you like to make an appointment on a different date okay so that is still offering the customer another option okay so the customer has now has a choice on what to do given uh, the circumstances okay, given the choices okay let's take a look at the next slide okay guys so we talked about the two different types the main types we have a complaint or a request now we're gonna talk about three most frequently shown situations that appear in the exam, okay? Let's talk about the first one. First one is in terms of a simple business request between businesses, from business to business, or it could be customer to business, okay? Let's look at the next slide here. We'll, sh we'll see a couple of examples, okay? The first example in this particular case is a request. It says, the customer says, hi, this is Ryan Kim. I called for a taxi five minutes ago. Can I cancel my request? 
It looks like I'm going to have to stay here a little longer than expected. The solution, which is the business end, okay, the, uh, the customer service uh, personnel states, no problem, Mr. Kim. I have canceled your request for the taxi service, for our taxi service. Okay, so in that case, very simple request and very simple answer. It's done. The reservation has been canceled. Okay, so that is an example of a simple solution. Okay, let's talk about the second case here. It's between this uh, specific situation is between uh, coworkers. It's a request between coworkers slash friends. Interbusiness. Okay, let's look at the example on the slide. The request states. Hey Ryan, can you help me with my presentation on improving the inventory? I only have two weeks to work on it and I don't really know where to start. Okay. And this one here is the response of that other person, Ryan. Okay. I'm afraid I can't help you out because I'm going to be busy all week long with my own project. But I know uh, someone who can help you with your presentation. His name is Lewis, and he has worked in the in inventory department for over five years. So he should be able to answer all your questions regarding the inventory. Why don't you give him a call? I can give you his number. Let me know if you want it. Okay, so in that case right over there, okay, it's a request done by a coworker to Ryan saying, can you help me out with this project? It's due in two weeks. It's about improving the inventory. The friend, unfortunately, Ryan, is busy with his own project. And so instead of saying, sorry, I'm busy and not giving any solution to it, he says, well, I know a friend named Lewis. Okay? He has five years of experience in the inventory, so he can help you out and give, give you all the answers that you, that you need okay? so he can help you out. I have his number. Would you like uh, to call him? Okay. So in, in a way, uh, Ryan is referring uh, his, his coworker or friend to another person named Lewis. Okay, so that's another method that you can see there. Let's take a look at the next one. Okay, we're going to talk about consultation. Okay, the third most frequently seen uh, situation is when you have a consultation, okay? So let's look at this slide. We'll go ahead and put out the example request and also the example solution. Here we go. The request, my restaurant is struggling to make a profit these days. How can I improve the situation? Example solution, I have a few suggestions to make. First of all, why don't you advertise your restaurant on the local newspaper? That should attract more customers. In the meantime, you should improve the atmosphere of your restaurant to attract younger generation of customers. One other thing that I can suggest is to find a way to cut the cost of ingredients. I hope this helps. So in this specific example, the restaurant owner needed advice on how to improve his restaurant business okay now within that the the expert on that field okay suggested three things first of all is to advertise the restaurant in the newspaper okay local newspaper so that's one suggestion okay there's no guarantee that any of these suggestions will actually improve his uh, business Okay. Also, another thing is that these three suggestions take time for the restaurant, restaurant owner to do. Okay. So it's a long process. Okay. It's constantly trial and error. Okay. They have to keep trying. Okay. If one doesn't work, go to the next, next suggestion or maybe do all three at the same time. Okay. The second one was uh, to change the environment, maybe uh, do a renovation of the inside of the restaurant so they could appeal, the restaurant could appeal to more younger generations. That's another one. It's a renovation. It takes a longer time, lots of money to change, improve the indoors. The, uh, yeah. 
Okay, and then the third one is to figure out a way to cut the cost of the ingredients. So maybe use, uh, maybe buy ingredients from a different uh, vendor. Okay, that could co uh, cut the cost of the ingredients to save some more money. Okay, when the when the income is lower. Okay, so those are the suggestions. Um, that is an example of the consultation with an expert. Okay, and there you go. Okay guys, in conclusion, we have a couple of things to cover here. Okay, at the end of the session, what you have to do um, is you have to end it with a closing statement, okay? So here we go. So we're talking about A here. Uh, after the solution has been given, uh, we have a couple of different examples that you can say at the end of the message, okay? Let's take a look at the slide and we'll go ahead and list out the examples. Okay, example number one, we have, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please call me back, okay? Second example, if you need further assistance, feel free to contact me on my personal cell phone. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, the phone number, okay? Third example is, thank you for your inquiry. Have a pleasant day, okay? Three very different examples um, on there as a closing statement. Number one just says, I hope it helps. If you have any questions, please call me. Number two is similar. If you need help uh, even more after this phone call, then call me again. Uh, my phone number is this. So they out actually provided the phone number. Okay, the third one is saying, thank you for the call. Have a nice day. And that's it, short and sweet. Okay, let's look at category B. This is in form in response to a complaint. You apologized and then you provided a solution, then you provided additional solution or information and then how to close it. Well, you start, you, uh, again, you, you, what you wanna do is you want to apologize once more right at the end. Okay, so let's look at two examples there. Once again, I apologize for this inconvenience. Okay, that's one. Okay, the other one is, I will make sure that this won't happen again. Okay, again, you apologize and then you say, don't worry, this won't happen again. This will be the only time that happens. Okay, the last example here is, if you have any more concerns, please let me know or please call us back. Okay, so you're showing the customer that you are there. Okay, if they have any more problems, you are there to help them out. Okay. I'm sorry that you went through this problem again. I hope it never happens again. Okay, so that's what you're talking about there. Okay, so there you go.